and I hate sand. It's coarse, it's irritating, and it gets everywhere. George Lucas's vision starts to come together. Again, completely overhated and underrated film. But this is where the brilliance and the flaws of the prequels both shine through the most. In some ways, it's a guilty pleasure Star Wars movie without the guilt. In other ways, it's better and more interesting than The Phantom Menace. In a lot of ways, a few ways, it is inferior. It's a tough one to really examine. As the first major Hollywood studio blockbuster shot completely on digital, it revolutionized a lot of CG and keying technology which had been rough or tougher to use at this point that the Phantom Menace employed greatly too. The results hold up in a mixed way. Landscapes, character models, and overall visual flair are gorgeous. But green screen backdrops do not hold up at all. They look fake often, if not 100% of the time. Some people complain about the pacing, but I find it to be much better than the Phantom Menace in that regard. The action is insanely good throughout. The first hour has great moments, but the most issues, whereas the second half is a borderline Star Wars fan service masterpiece. Seriously, that third act to me is absolutely incredible despite some poorly CG faced Dooku and the way weaker than Duel of the Fates duel. <laughs> but then Yoda, my boy, wow. The ending is amazing and sets up the Clone Wars perfectly. The Phantom Menace sets the stage for the world to show the slow fade into the war territory and Attack of the Clones thrust us in. It was a genius move on Lucas's part to save the majority of the wars for TV to be fully explored, but I also get why people wanted more of it in live action. Anyone who says Anakin's fall happens too fast and Revenge of the Sith didn't pay attention to his excellent growth in this one and what his journey has consisted of. And I think that's why I can put this above The Phantom Menace, not just for the more abundant action set pieces or fan service, but because the themes are more prevalent and I feel the emotional storytelling to a larger degree happening to all the characters, even though some are corny. More on that later. I've heard the plot described as incoherent. I spent a fair amount of time Googling questions that I had from this, from plot holes, uh, from the plot of the film and the, that the trilogy just doesn't answer. And there are some simple answers and others are assumptions and some are answered later on in the television series, The Clone Wars. Number one, they weren't as suspicious of the clones because they believe sifo who? At the time, a Jedi had ordered it. They were also forced into a situation where they needed them. Palpatine is brilliant. Two, assuming this never gets answered, when it's revealed someone named Tyrannus hired Jango, who Obi-Wan had no idea who that was, and that Tyrannus was Dooku, I think most people assume Dooku was just pretending to be Deus or that he had killed him and stole the plans for the clones. Going off of that last point, it's never resolved and other canon sources are murky on who deleted Kamino from the archives. But one can somewhat logically assume it had to be sifo or Dooku, the other being the likely culprit because of still being a Jedi. sifo that is. Number four, they overlooked Jango Fett being involved in the complex web because it had to be assumed he was a bounty hunter double agent, making money from the clones and working for the Separatists. Any disillusions they had were probably squashed when Obi-Wan heard Dooku tell Gunray he had promised to have Padme killed. Answers that question. Again, the Clone Wars clears up and fleshes out almost all of these questions, but it is a bit of a problem that you have to make assumptions without it. Maybe some of it is supposed to be vague. The film should have answered them on its own. It's not as impossible to answer as some think, but it is quite distracting at times if you're interested in lore and continuity. If you want to turn your brain off and enjoy this one, I wouldn't blame you. It's easier to do. On the famous dialogue, all I'll say is we all know. And I still argue it isn't as bad in places as people say it is. It's very melodramatic, soap opera-esque, and akin to old serials. It is what it is. Attack of the Clones might be my guilty pleasure Star Wars movie. And that's okay. If you love it, love what you love. Just be prepared to engage with what content is there and be able to articulate why you love it. I could spend a lot longer going through why I love this movie. You know, talking about the... The arena fight at the end uh, with all the creature designs as a big monster guy myself or seeing all the Jedi as a kid and like just absolutely loving everything going on uh, with the lightsaber duel, seeing Yoda get to duel, uh, force lightning coming back. Uh, you know, th there's just, there's so much to love in that last act. And I even think C-3PO's humor is pretty funny. So, yeah, I guess that leads me to this. Uh, I give Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, 4.5 out of 5 stars. I can't believe it's been 20 years. That's wild to think about. But 
if you made it this far in the review to quote C-3PO. No, this is such a drag. Please subscribe.